Hey team, welcome back. We're talking about the first area moment of inertia, capital Q. We started the chapter on transverse shear. We're going to see this new thing pop up. Capital Q. What the heck is Q? Okay. Q is called the first area moment of inertia. Okay. And it is a description of an area above or below a point of interest that we're interested in. Okay. And I'm going to work a bunch of these for you and kind of show you how to do this. Um, but Q is really confusing for students, so I'm going to see if I can clear it up for you, okay? So you're going to see Q in things like the new shear equation. Before we had shear, we had V over A, which was average shear. Now we're interested in shear at a particular point, okay? And at a particular point, we're going to have something called transverse shear. And we have to use find capital Q, this first area moment of inertia, to find out what is Q, what the heck is Q. And then we've got little Q, which is shear flow. We're gonna to have to talk about that in this chapter. Uh, and it's VQ over I is the equation for that. So this is sneak peek into some equations that are in your future, okay? But anyway, I wanna show you how to get to Q. Now, here's the equation for Q, the first area moment of inertia, okay? This should look familiar to you. What is that? You remember this guy? Y bar equals the sum of the Y A's over the sum of the A's. Oh, that's the centroid equation, isn't it? Right? Guess what? The top half of the centroid equation is capital Q, okay? It's first area moment of inertia. So let me explain to you how you find Q. Let's look at this shape over here. I kind of have this kind of fat T shape. It's got a heavy top on it, a little skinny bottom. Uh, and I've got some points, A, B, C, uh, D on it. And I want to find Q for all of those points. So what is Q? Okay. So anytime you have a point, Q is going to be that, the Y times the A's, of, some, of all the area above that point of interest. Now, if I'm looking at point A, it would be all of this up here. Okay. Now, for when you're looking at Q, about the neutral axis, about the centroidal axis, the area below or the area above, either one of those will give you the exact same Q. And that's where Q is going to be maximum, at the neutral axis. Because that's the place where you have the absolute most amount of area above or below that point. Okay. Once you start moving away from the neutral axis, let's say I move it to point B, there is less area above that, okay? So here's the secret for Q. If the point of interest that you're going to take Q at, right? Let's say I'm, I'm finding Q at point B, or I'm finding it at point C, or I'm finding it at point D. Then I have to look at that point, and I'm interested in the area from that point to the outside of the part. Now, when I say the outside of the part, if I'm at B... This is the area to the outside of the part. If I was at a point down here, right, let's call that A, B, C, D, E, then if I'm taking it here, then the area is this way. It's always the shortest distance to the outside of the part, okay? So it's, it, I would use the area below point E. Q can never be bigger than it is at the neutral axis, right? So if you, you go down to E and you say, oh, I'm gonna go all this area up here. No, you can't do that because that Q is bigger than the one that's at the neutral axis. That's not how you do it, okay? So that's why I say it's the area above or below the point of interest. If your point of interest is above the axis, your area is gonna be above the axis. If your point of interest is below the axis, your area is going to be below the axis, okay? Are you with me? All right, let's do an example, and let's just say that, let's go here, and, and let's say this, whoa, this looks very crooked, doesn't it? Okay, this here is, let's say 25. Okay, so let's see if we can calculate some of these, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, the very first thing that's not on here is where the heck is the neutral axis, Okay. So let's find that right off the bat. Let's find this. What is y bar, okay? 
And we find that using our old centroid equation here, don't we? Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this into two shapes. I'm going to cut it right across here. Right? Shape number one. Shape number two. Let's go, gang. You remember how to do this? This is statics review, isn't it? Let's build us a quick centroid table. Shape number one, shape number two, Y, A, Y, A. Here's our little table. Okay. What's the centroid, the Y bar for shape number one? Well, it's 100 millimeters tall, so half of that is 50. And the area is 100 times 20. That's two with one, two, three zeros. So what is that? That's 10 with four zeros, one, two, three, four. That's 100,000. Now what's Y bar of shape two? Okay, I gotta go 100 to get two shape two, plus 25 more, right? So shape two is at 125, times the area, which is what? 200 times 50. That's 10 with one, two, three zeros on it. Yeah, one, two, three, okay? And then that's 125 with one, two, three, four zeros on it. One, two, three, four, okay? And so what do I have? The sum of the A's is 12,000, and the sum of the YA's is zero, 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 five, two, one. No, how about three, okay? 1,250 plus 100 is 1,350, isn't it? Okay, now Y bar is, can I get rid of three zeros? I'll get rid of these three zeros and I'll get rid of those three zeros. So Y bar is 1,350 divided by 12, okay? And that is, well, 1,350 divided by 12, 112.5. Okay, so now we know where the Y bar is. And I, I did you wrong here. Y bar is actually, I'm gonna change this, okay? I'm gonna change this, but that's okay. Because I wanted to find point A at the neutral axis for you, okay? So the neutral axis is actually right across there, isn't it? Okay, neutral axis. So let's, let's move, let's, I'm gonna get rid of this because I was just guessing where that was. Guessed poorly. Okay, and point A is right there, okay? So point A is on the neutral axis, okay? So here's Y bar now, Whoop. okay, which is 112.5. All right, so I've got four points I wanna find, point A, point B, and point B is one molecule, well, it's, it's, right, in, it's right on the little transition from the skinny to the fat part. Point C is right up here in the middle, and then point D is way down there at the bottom, okay? So let's just start with A, okay? So Q for point A is equal to, okay? But let's do this a couple of ways. It's the sum of the Y times the A's. So for point A, the area above point A is that whole top rectangle, isn't it, okay? So the question is, where is Y bar for that top rectangle, okay? Now that top rectangle is what? 37.5, right? 50 minus 12.5, yeah. So this distance here is 37.5 from the very top of the part to the neutral axis, okay? So let me put a dot, where's my red pen? Here's my red pen. Let me put a dot where the centroid of the shape above A is. It's right there, okay? Okay, are you with me? So that area, okay, the area is 37.5 times 200, okay? That's the A. Now what is the Y bar for that shape? And it's always measured from the neutral axis, okay? So from the neutral axis, up to that red dot, how much is it? Well, it's 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 half of 37.5, isn't it? So divided by two, 18.75.
Okay, so that's Y bar, that's this whole business right there is A, and that's gonna give me Q. Now, area is in millimeters squared, and Y is in millimeters, so what are the units for Q? It's millimeters cubed, okay? But it's not a volume, all right? It's a representation of a, an area and how far away from the neutral axis that area is, okay? That's what Q is. So this one is going to be 18.75 times 200 times 37.5. Woo, 140,625. Whoops. 140,625 millimeters cubed. Now, just for fun, I did Q above the point A. Let's do Q below point A. Well, let's see what that is, okay? So Q, A, right, is the sum of the Y times the A's, except what am I gonna do here? In this, this case, right, I'm gonna erase this, A, whoop, and then now I'm talking about this area here, below that, and all of this down here, okay? So now I'm talking about that. Okay, so that's two pieces, isn't it? Let me get my uh, red marker again, and let's put a dot in the middle of that piece and a dot in the middle of that piece, okay? All right. So here's, here we go. So let's just make this, uh, again, that'll be piece number one. This will be piece number two, okay? So the area of piece number two is what? Is... Uh, 12.5, right? If this is 112.5 to get up to here, right? Then this little bit must be just 12.5 times 200. That's the area of the little skinny long one there, right? Times Y bar, where's that dot? That dot is in the middle of that rectangle, the little 12.5 tall. So that's what? 6.25 millimeters away, okay? So times 6.25 millimeters, okay? So that's that piece. Then I got this piece, which is what? Plus, that piece is 20 times 100, right? Times the centroid of this piece. Where's the centroid of that piece? Well, from the neutral axis, you go 12.5 and then another 50. So that's what? 62.5, okay? And let's see what we get here. 12.5 times 200 times 6.25 equals 15, 625 plus 20 times 100 times 62.5 is 125,000. And if we add those two together, what do you get? Plus 15,625, bam, 140,625. Okay? So when you're calculating Q about the neutral axis, you can calculate above the point or below the point. And guess what? You'll get the exact same Q. And it's the biggest Q. That's as big as Q can possibly be for that shape, okay? If you get something bigger than that, you have screwed up, okay? Don't do it. So you can do, and what's my advice to you? Which one do I do? Do the easier one, which was this top one, because the easier one had just one shape. This one had two shapes, didn't it? Okay? Are you with me so far? All right, now I'm gonna, let me erase this again, and let's come back and let's look at point B, okay? Point B. All right, let me kind of erase all that. So point B is right there, okay? So I'm gonna put a little dash, dash, dash through point B. What are we talking about this time? Now point B is below the neutral axis, so our area has to be below the neutral axis, right? So our area that we're looking at now is this here. Okay, so Q for point B is going to be equal to that area, which is 20 times 100 times the Y bar. Okay, here's the centroid. Where is it? 
it's 12.5 plus 50. It's 62.5, okay? So guess what? QB, and we already did this calculation, 20 times 100 times 60, it's right there. 125,000 millimeters cubed. Notice that this number is less than that number, right? Centroid is about, about the centroid has got to be the biggest Q, so everything else is going to be smaller. Let's calculate point C. Point C is above the neutral axis, right? So what are we going to do? We're talking about this space up here this time, okay? Let's do that guy. Q of point C is equal to, what's that area? It's 200 times there's 25 to the top of the part from point C. So 200 times 25 times the centroid of that shape measured from the neutral axis. Let's see, if that's 25, then this has to be right here. Whoop, whoop. That has to be 12.5, doesn't it? So I have to go 12.5 to get up to that shape, right? And then half of 25, which is another 12.5. So the centroid for point C's shape, that area above point C, is 25. Okay? And so what? 25 times 25 times 200 equals 125,000. It's the same as the other guy, isn't it? Okay? Are you with me? Now one more, let's calculate Q for point D. It's way down on the bottom, okay? Point D is below the, the centroid, below the neutral axis. So I'm looking at the area below point D. How much area is below point D? None, it's on the outside of the part. So therefore Q on the outside of the part is how much? Zero. All right. So that is Q, and that's how you calculate it, okay? So it's the area above or below the point of interest. If your point of interest is below, above the neutral axis, your area is above. If it's below, your area is below. Remember, and Y bar is always the distance from the neutral axis of the whole thing to the centroid of the area piece that you're looking for, okay? Man, I hope that makes that easy to calculate Q. And it'll make the rest of this chapter a breeze for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.